That's about all I know about mustard gas. Good stuff to leave alone. This is the effect of modern chemical warfare, the bodies of men, women and children strewn in the streets of Halabjar. The people, the families we found lying all around had not been injured. They'd been poisoned by chemical bombs and shells containing cyanide, mustard and other nerve gases. Devastating raid shatters the town. Many hundreds died in that one onslaught. It's a heavy blow, and Darwin's defenders shut their teeth and await the anticipated Japanese landing. Midget submarines enter Sydney Harbour. Sydney and Newcastle shelled by submarines at night. Damage is slight. A few houses hit, but it brought the war close home. Gentlemen, the truth is that if we do not strip ourselves to save our country, the enemy will do it for us, with ruthless efficiency, imposing upon us a maximum of misery. When the war broke out, all that we knew about mustard gas was the information that was gathered in France and Europe in the First World War. There had been a little bit of research done in England, and even less in Australia, uh, between the wars, but it was expected that it, chemical warfare would be used if another war started. The basic reason for that was the Japanese had used it in Manchuria against the Chinese, and the Italians had used it in Ethiopia against the Abyssinians. What made Australian research urgent uh, was the fact that the Japanese took Singapore, and we realised that we would have to fight a war under tropical conditions virtually on our own back doorstep. Later, when we pushed the Japanese out of New Guinea, they left behind a 75 millimetre shell that was filled with a mixture of mustard gas and lewisite. And it was the fact that we found this that convinced me and a number of other people that we were on the right track. Now that is the um, fuse holder off that shell. I probably shouldn't have it and you probably shouldn't see it. My husband, Stan, was a war correspondent and the official photographer for the chemical warfare unit, the one they said never existed. And often he would be covered with mustard gas. And he continued filming because he thought it was more important to finish the film and to look after himself. After the war, he had a continual terrible cough and wheeze. So one day he thought, 
Oh, I'll just ask. Do you think it could be to do with mustard gas? To which the doctor said, nice try, fella, but we all know there was no mustard gas used in World War II. I first heard about chemical warfare indirectly. I was working in biochemistry at a Sydney hospital and I received a rather obscure letter suggesting I come down for an interview to Melbourne. I went down and I found myself confronted with uh, a Major Goral, a slight British or Cornish medico who had a science degree as well, who'd been sent out from England, uh, I imagine on a request from the British forces, or the Australian forces, to come out and train our medical officers in the treatment of gas casualties in case gas was to be used. After Goral had finished what he felt was an adequate laboratory test, he then decided we should go up north to Queensland uh, our first stop was Townsville, so that he could see how everything worked under tropical conditions as near as possible to those which might be expected in the field. When we started work on mustard gas in Queensland, the things that we did not know were just how effective it was under tropical conditions. The first trial, which happened in Townsville, they had a wooden box uh, that a man could get up and walk around inside, and this was painted inside with a special paint that the English had told us was mustard gas resistant. When they put a known concentration of mustard gas in the chamber early in the morning and tried to analyse it, they couldn't find any at all. So. Certain people went in to have a look. By the time they got in, it was round about lunchtime, temperatures shot up, and the mustard gas, which had been adsorbed into this paint, had desorbed out of the paint, and they all got burned. I got to the bungalow. There they were, lying on the veranda, having difficulty in their breathing, their faces like great red footballs, their eyes bunged up. I think it was mainly uh, in the second of our seasons, when we were at Innisfail, that we uh, felt the full advantages of international cooperation. Uh, Goral had flown back to England and got another half dozen people from Porton, the British Chemical Warfare Establishment, and uh, brought back as his uh, second in command, Captain David Sinclair. He was uh, my chief of the physiological work. And we also had visits from uh, uh, Captain Howard Skipper, a very amiable and highly skilled American biochemist and physiologist. We had also uh, had to discard the old gas chamber completely, redesign and build a stainless steel gas chamber, which behaved perfectly. The smallest amounts of mustard gas put up, were not absorbed by the wall, it remained in the atmosphere. They were able to control the temperature and humidity of this enormous 100 cubic metre gas chamber and do experiments which uh, were remarkably accurate. I first heard about chemical warfare and going to work for them when I was in an anti-aircraft unit. I had to go and see Colonel Goral and he explained what chemical warfare unit was and what they were going to do and told me that I was going to work for them and I said I didn't want to, I wanted to stay in the aircraft and he said well I had two choices, I could come like a lady or I could be sent.
at the time that I went up north and joined the unit, I had absolutely no knowledge of uh, what was going on, what the unit was doing, uh, nothing. I started off in the war as AMWAS, which means Australian Army Medical Women's Service, and um, I was 19 and really badly wanted to get into something that was exciting and adventurous. Even though I didn't know what it was, it had to be better than cutting bedpans. Sydney, and is the big parade of our wartime womanhood. Fine types they are, keen as mustard. When we finally organised the unit and they got everything together, we were all sent up to Queensland by train. I found the train trip very interesting because I'd never been to Queensland before and the country changed very dramatically. The further north you went, the more beautiful it was. It was rather mind-boggling to we girls from the south. that the excitement of all this contrast with our southern states and the different life we were leading, it deadened or hid um, away from us the, the implications of the deadliness of what we were actually doing. There is no way of finding out what damage mustard gas can do in the tropics except by using human volunteers. The initial letter going out calling for volunteers was, I think, a little obscure, uh, simply measure, mentioning experiments in the tropics. Well, the tropics always have a certain charm, and uh, the, the grapevine told them that there were members of the Australian Women Army Service in the unit, as well as a lot of scientists. It was no use uh, doing these experiments on animals and then not be able to tell us what their reactions were. So I guess we had to have humans. Oddly enough, it never seemed strange to us. Perhaps because it was the sort of thing we'd have done ourselves. It just seemed to be something that could be done for the war. I suppose we didn't think enough about the fact that they, all the volunteers we got were... Sixth and Ninth Division fellows who'd already done that bit, I suppose. We'd just come back from Dutch New Guinea and uh, we are um, been on leave and we had to report back to Strathpine in North Queensland. And uh, one morning they came around there, we were getting a bit sick of these route marches, so uh, they asked for a gas, anyone, any volunteers for a gas girl? So uh, the mate and I, we looked at each other and we said, oh, well, we might learn something from this, so away we went. We thought it was only something to do with tear gas and that. When we got to the gas girl there, they told us it was uh, mustard gas and we didn't know much about what it was or anything like that until we copped it. They said, you can step out if you don't want to go through with it. Well, no one stepped out. Being Australians, we don't let your mates down and all this sort of business. and. Uh, no one would fall out. There was no information given about what we were going to do when we arrived at this experimental unit. 